I'm always excited when we have uh, when we have a woman on our show because for so long it, you know it was very hard to, to to get women to come to this podcast for some reason you know <laughs> it's not for lack of trying it was just didn't work out and uh, and I I'm I'm getting a feeling that the more and more that uh, women will somehow play an important role in this I really do have the, this feeling. And so every time where we can get that perspective, that view, that th thinking here, I'm very excited about it. On behalf of all women, we introduce you to <laughs> men haven't done a great job up until this point. Femininity is the one thing that can bring a man to his knees. There's this immense power, you know, anything that men do, they do it because of women, let's face it. Men are more likely to commit suicide, men are more likely to end up in jail. She's the founder of Savvy Auntie. This is about human rights, they said. What do you have to do with anti-Semitism? I wrote a piece for the New York Post. The author of Otherhood, Modern Women Finding a New Kind of Happiness. And I said that Jews should skip the Women's March and instead celebrate Shabbat. Melanie Notkin, please join us. The Jews saw them all, beat them all, and is now what he always was. All things are mortal but the Jew. All other forces pass, but he remains. What is the secret of his immortality? As a Jewess, I'll add the S's because I'm now representing the femininity. Um, you know, well, of course it affects me and whether it affects me, um, as part of the tribe, it, whether it affects me specifically, individually, whether it affects me as a Jew in New York, um, it, whether it affects my nephew and nieces, uh, you know, it's, it's part of something that um, sometimes, thank God, is dormant. Uh, sometimes uh, the sleeping giant is awoken. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. Right. Um, well, yeah, and, it's, been, it's, it's been awakened yeah. for a while now. I mean, it's, it hasn't been so. Yeah. Well, and, you know, we usually usually we get it from one side or the other. You know, now it's like they're clowns to the there's clowns to the left of me and, and jokers, to, jokers the right. to the right. Here I am yeah. stuck in the middle with Jews, <laughs> getting it from all nice. sides. That's good. I, I, you know, Tarantino is, you know, lives right around the corner from my parents. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell him. Oh, that, that, that. Yeah. please. Yeah. If, because this, it, it is true. I do feel often caught in the middle and, and sometimes frankly caught even in the middle with my Jewish friends. And, you know, because of Facebook, many of us are in touch with our childhood friends, our Jewish day school friends, my Salma Chekta friends from Canada. Um, the, uh, I'll give you a, an example happened back in, I think, yeah, it must have been 2017. So Trump was in office for about three and a half minutes. And um, there had been the Women's March. And then in March on International Women's Day, um, there was, or no, sorry, yes, in March, there was to be a women's strike or something like that. There was something being organized. And the person organizing it, or at least one of the producers, is a woman named Rosmea Ode, who is uh, a uh, convicted uh, Palestinian terrorist, who in 1969 was part of a bombing effort. Um, one bomb hit a, a small supermarket and, and killed two uh, American boys studying at Hebrew U. And I shared that information on Facebook to say, just know with whom you march. And the feedback was from my Jewish friends. And, and by the way, I shared all the legal, like all the history, like this is not, she, she'd come to America without telling authorities that she had served 10 years in prison in Israel. She um, was able to leave prison because of a, um, prisoner swap with Lebanon. She came to America without notifying um, the authorities here of her uh, felony and was trying to become an American citizen. And here was standing with other anti-Semitic producers of the Women's, of the women's March and others um, to create this, this strike. 
and I was surprised at how um, my Montreal friends, many of whom now live in the U.S., like I do, um, found that I was being somehow offensive, that I didn't understand. This is about human rights, they said, because of Trump. And I said, what about the rights of these two young men at, at Hebrew University? So I noticed that it was not, it, it was also, the call was coming from inside the house as well. And, uh, you know, they were like, you know, you're alt-right. I'm like, I'm not alt-right. <laughs> I'm just sharing the information. I'm just right in this case, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just right. Thank you. I just have There's to no be alternative. Right. Here's the information. Oh my gosh. And by the way, to, to their credit, um, within a year, um, they all came to me. They realized how wrong they were. One way or another. Were. Yeah. They apologized. Wow. So, um, yeah. Well, it was well, that's quite a, amazing. I was, I was going to ask you, you know, which wall in your house did you just bang your head on when, when something like that <laughs> happens. Um, but what, what made them uh, change their mind? Because I don't think most people change their mind. Well, about a year later, a big article, which you may be aware of in Tablet Magazine, um, came out exposing the Women's March for their um, anti-Semitism. I was, about, I, my, just about, I was yeah. just about to ask about this whole meltdown that happened there because the founders were a Jewish lady, right? A black girl, a Latina, yeah. and, and Linda Sarsour, right? Those are the... Well, one of the one of the women, the Jewish woman, actually, who organized the whole thing, um, was kicked out. Yeah, exactly. No, she, that was my point. Yeah. She, yeah. The, the, I, think the, I think the black girl, I mean, they were talking about racism and all that, and then the black, and they're like, yeah, we're against it. And then the black girl was like, I think you should take a look at your role in perpetuating uh, oppression well, and all that. And that and that's... Her for the, the Jews for the slave trade and all of that, right, um, right. all those conspiracy theories. And so um, I wrote a piece for the New York Post, like you mentioned at the top, I'm a contributor to the op-ed section at the Post. And I said, why Jews, the, the Women's March the second year was going to be on Shabbat. And I said that Jews should skip the Women's March and instead um, celebrate Shabbat that Saturday, unify. And um, and that got wonderful, wonderful feedback. I ended up on Fox News. It was so interesting. I, I did the morning show, the national Fox morning show. And I literally had to say on Facebook, I was invited by Fox to come on. Just, and to just talk proves about what this. alt right you are. Oh, exactly. <laughs> I said, but I would have gone on any morning show that invited me although only Fox invited me. And one very young, very brave friend said to me, well, well, I really appreciate what you're doing, but I just cannot watch Fox. I'm like, oh, so brave. You can't wait to turn on the t I mean, I'm putting myself out there saying, you know, Farrakhan is bad, et cetera. And you can't watch the channel to support, anyway, not that it mattered, but you know, it's, they, they always have to sort of take a stand. And so, you know, usually when we thought of until recently, when most Jews, and still today, frankly, unfortunately, most Jews in America think of anti-Semitism, they think about it coming from the right. And of course, we saw tragically that happen in, in October of 2018, or was it 19, I should know, in, in, in Pittsburgh, since COVID, all my years are mixed up. Um, we're an alt-right, legit alt-right, um, murdered 11 people at the synagogue there. Um, but most in America, um, certainly in what we call the blue states here, the more li liberal states, much of the anti-Semitism is coming from the left, but you have to whisper it. And you're not allowed to really say it. And it was, well, it's, you know, it's all that when anti-Semitism really started to perk up in, in New York City um, in 2018 and 19, People said, yeah, you know, and it's it's all the Republicans and the far right, et cetera. And I'm like, what? do you see men walking around in white sheets in Manhattan? It's not coming from the right. We don't have anti-Semitism. I'm sure it's there, it's everywhere. Um, but it's really coming from the left. And it's really only recently, frankly, to your point, your question about, you know, what made them come back um, and apologize is that, you know, we, because of cell phones and videos that people share, that people are able to see that it's coming from from the left. And and while Kanye um, says he's of the right, 
a lot of his learnings, the black Hebrew stuff, the Farrakhan um, miseducation is, is something I, I, I would say is from the left. You know, there, there's Leo was joking about it a bit at the beginning, but for example, if you um, get a paycheck from the ADL, you know, as a high ranking member there or the cancer society or any of these organizations, you know, once those problems are solved, you're out, you know, your whole fundraising arm is out, all your power is gone. So there's, there's a, some joke that I'm not remembering about uh, the, the fox in the hen house or something like that, but <clears throat> you have an issue that um, to be, we, we all consider ourselves kind of progressive, progressive thinkers involved. We want good for everyone. We want everyone to be fed and everyone to be healthy and everyone to have rights. Uh, and it doesn't really fit with all that to also say that there's this anti-Semitism coming from that side. So I'm actually surprised to hear that you, because most of the people that I know didn't come to that realization yet that it's also coming from the left. So I'm curious, is it like a small piece of, of your, of the population or the, of your friends that, that had this realization? Is it, and how, how did it, you know, they just saw an article and realized it because it's not just an article because we all know you can have an, not just an article, you can have an entire news channel dedicated to something. It's not going to make someone, you know, you're, you're, you're the person you mentioned wouldn't even turn on another news channel with an opposing view. So something has to change inside to make somebody uh, look at that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's a, it's certainly not um, a, 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 you know, a wellspring of people who are all of a sudden becoming more enlightened to it, unfortunately, or maybe they are, but don't want to say it because it's not politically correct. Um, I I wish it were more people. I I that you know clowns on the right, jokers on the left. Here I am stuck in the middle with Jews. I post that very often um, in order for people to see it. Um, I think it's starting to ring true. Um, I but yet I think that um, so many in America well, were, were polarized you know, to the extreme left and to the extreme right, the noise on the left, the noise on the right, um, you know, makes it seem like it's majorities on both. Um, in America, it's funny that the, the, or not funny, I'm finding it, I'm happy about it. The majority of registered voters are actually registered independents. Most people in America are politically homeless and um, really don't know where to vote and they don't know where to go to shul. They don't like Jews don't know where to go. Shul, like I, you know, many like me have the problem of, well, you know, it, it, I, we don't want it to be everything's politicized. Everything, you know, any shul that's not orthodox goes far to the left um, in every speech, sermon, and on the right, um, you know, there are fewer shuls as as people get older, et cetera. They're just finding we're having. I think Jews in America are having trouble finding a home and the traditional home for many who most secular Jews has been on the left. And so they're speaking the language of the tribe, trying not to upset, trying to do, you know, what they believe is best. Um, we all know about inter intersectionality. I hope many of your listeners understand about intersectionality where, you know, it, it was it was brought up. In, in the 70s to say that, you know, this isn't just about race, blacks and whites, but, you know, even, you know, a, a black man would be doing better than a black woman in America at the time, black, a white man better than a white woman. And yeah. and it has been it's dissected called the, it, sometimes. It's called the Olympics of the, of the victims. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yes, who can get the worst score? But, however, however, person? to be fair, Jews are not allowed in, in those Olympics. Because they would always take gold, so so. so well, they... but that's the problem. We do. We're we are like number one oppressor, right? Somehow. And number and also um, number one victims. Let's let's not forget. So. Well, that... well, yes, no, but we we understand our victimhood, but they see us a first of all as white. Um, I I don't know if it, not everybody will see this on video, but I see you can tell from my eyebrows that I'm not white. 
<laughs> I have a Masha, uh, I'm from my family's from Mashad in Persia. I have a Mizrahi background. Oh, I want to start that, yeah. yeah, half Mizrahi, half I grew up Ashkenazi. Um, but I, you know, not all Jews are quote unquote white. I don't love mm -hmm. that idea. You can and see that I'm not white. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't know about it. Maybe the hand. Okay. Um, Romanian. We, we're <laughs> Romanian. We're, you know, we, we are, we are not a race. We are exactly. a, a nation. And so, you know, putting us as whites make us, you know, the oppressors. But of course, um, you know, not too long ago, uh, it was, be, we were, six million of us were killed because we weren't white. So we are whatever color fits the narrative for the for those who want to attack us with anti-Semitism. So I, I want to just pick up on that last line, the one before last line that you said. Uh, we, we like to ask people when they come here, you know, how would you describe uh, what a Jew or who a Jew is to an alien? Like if they came to, mm. to Earth, what, what, what would you say? Because mm. um, a Jew is one there are so many uh, definitions of it. I mean, technically, halachically, legally speaking, as a Jew, it is because their mother and their mother's mother on up, um, their matriarchal lineage there, is there, Jewish. There were times that even fathers determined the identity of yes. the son. So, okay. so okay. doesn't so count, right? Today, okay, that's one way of looking at it. Um, but we are a nation, a nation that, that, um, that holds um, the Tanakh, the first testament, the first Bible, um, as our, uh, our our history and ancestry, and our um, and the the first uh, book of our laws. Um, it and it is be to be Jewish. It, to be Jewish is to know our our language, both literal and um, ideological. It is to know, um, it is to know our, our common history, even if it is not common within our, our, our Ashkenazi, Sephardi, Mizrahi histories, more recent histories. Um, it is to be a Jew is to be anywhere in the world and meet another Jew and know your home. That's a, that last one is a great. Yeah. The last one is uh, hit me in the, in the gut. Mm. Yeah. Do you, do you think, true. Do, do you, mm. I have a question. I don't know. I will follow up on that, Seth, if you, if you don't mind, do, do you think, do you think that uh, other Nations have that that kind of feeling. I, probably, sure. I'm sure Italians might have that. Um, Greeks might have that. Chinese people might have that. Japanese people might have that. Those who have very strong um, connections to their past and to their cultures, absolutely. Um, there, it's you know, it's funny. There is something about the way I believe Jews see other Jews um, that is so familiar, even if we don't know them. So, for instance, in Manhattan, which is already, you know, so many races and ethnicities, etc., walk down the street, and I'll note two Israelis coming toward me, even if I can't hear that they're speaking Hebrew. Um, it is, you know, even on, I'm, I'm single and using the apps, uh, even if the guy doesn't say he's Jewish or before he can even read it, I could tell generally and not because he looks like Woody Allen. Uh, but, you know, there is something, there's something about it. And by the way, when I'm wrong, he's generally Italian. And which is not surprising. And probably because, is Jewish somewhere in his. <laughs> well, and and we are, you know, many of us are Italian. In the, you know, the Ashkenazi, eighty percent of Ashkenazi Jews come from four Roman women. The DNA of four Roman women. Um, right, but I, I was I deliberately wanted to stay away from genetics because you know I, I, when you walk down the street and you feel someone else, it's not because you saw their DNA test. It's because you you have a feeling. 
And, yeah. and that, that, that's what we're, we're trying to, we kind of like circle around that idea of a feeling because mm-hmm. um, we are feeling creatures and very often we try to, you know, then add all those stories to, to try to explain those feelings or, or to, to try to change them. Or something. But first of all, we feel things. And, mm-hmm. and so the, the, the next question is really about that feeling. I mean, do you feel like there's something um, unique, special about the, this group, Jewish people, who obviously yield uh, a disproportionate amount of, of influence, draw this disproportionate amount of attention. It's not exactly like everyone else. Like it's hard to, you can't just like really say it. You know what I mean? It's like. Mm. Well, let me uh, put a footnote on Leo's question before you answer it. So Leo, the, the question, the one line question is, do you feel something unique about the Jews, right? Is right. that, is that, I'm yeah. asking, is that the question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and then the footnote next to the word Jew at the bottom of the page says, you know, could be a lot of people who either identify as Jews, don't identify as Jews. If Kanye is a Jew, fine. If this one's a Jew, fine. You know, we're not, Leo and I are not there, or we're saying nobody yet is the arbiter of who is a Jew. Actually, you were kind of before, well, is it halachic? Is it this? Is it whatever? Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> we're not talking about um, some group that we are somehow defining let's use the broadest possible definition but just with that feeling Mm -hmm. uh, and now with with that now that we read the footnote with that feeling is there something unique about this group whoever they are well again we you know the the jews in israel and in exile as we say uh like i said earlier wherever we are you meet another jew and you 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 know, I said, you feel like you're home, you feel like they're family, and often they will greet you as family as you will them. Um, yeah, but, what, know, what, but what is it yeah. to you? Like, what, uh, what is it like to you? You wake up in the morning, you feel something, you know, like, you know, like sometimes you, 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 you wake up in the morning and you have certain really strong sensations about something like, you know, today I'm going to be this or do that or, you know, I, I felt, you know, over the years, there were moments where, where in, in the beginning, I grew up in Israel, then I moved to New York. I spent the first 20 something years in Israel, then another 20 something years in, in New York. So almost like half and half. And and uh, at first I was, I didn't even think about this concept of being a Jew. It's like a fish in water, right? You don't, you don't feel the water, right? Uh, yeah. Then I left Israel and suddenly this whole Jewish thing, like, you know, it's like, landed on me especially i remember i was walking with my wife one day in brooklyn and we're talking english and and some and we're like looking at a at a, at a, a building of, like we're looking for an apartment and then some some jewish guy comes like hey you jews you're looking for a place i'm like whoa whoa how do you know we're <laughs> like oh God, come on everybody knows <laughs> you know <it's> like, <laughs> everybody so, knows yeah so 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 it really hit me that, that 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 there's there's you know there's something and that it's you can't really um shake it off you can't change it it's not like you can convert to something else or get a different citizenship there's a, a certain quality that's like inside so i start to ask you know what is it and, and some days i felt it more some days i felt it less nowadays after all everything that we've been doing we feel it much more and we have also a definition for this this feeling but i don't want to impose it i want to ask really do you feel that do you feel you wake up in the morning do you feel that life is just you know i i you know i wake up i have my job i have my this i have that, I, uh, or is there something else? Is there something deeper, higher? I don't know. I'm deliberately kind of yeah. leading the witness, but I'm, I'm trying to, I, I want to get something from you, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's literally as I wake up. Uh, although if I were more religious, I would, of course, say, Moda'ani. I would thank God for my, for having woken up, right? I would, I would um, say that prayer that, that reminds me that I'm a Jew. I um, I have a kosher home, and I when I eat out, I eat um, I don't eat uh, treif uh, meat and shellfish, etc. But I eat out, you know, whatever. I watch what I eat. I eat basically kosher food, um, even if not halakhically kosher. So I and people ask me why I do it, and I say, you know, there's it doesn't make sense and. I say, you know, first of all, nobody said that faith uh, is logical. Um, and secondly, uh, it reminds me that I'm a Jew wherever I go. Why, why, uh, do, you, why do you need that, that, that memory with you? 
Shouldn't we leave it behind? It's mostly suffering. Come on. Uh, it's only suffering. I said mostly. Uh, I didn't say only. I said mostly. This, this, you this forgot, and then we, but and then we eat. Yeah. Well, the you know the the meaning of life actually. If when you know, people ask others what the meaning of life is, I say the meaning of life is to suffer. I say that because it is what we do with the suffering that gives us purpose. Such a Jew, Leo. She's such a Jew. My God. I am such a Jew. I'm such a Jew. You I am. got one. There's, there's no chance. You can't, you can't convert out of that. You can't, you can't do anything. You're stuck with it. It's... See, if you couldn't tell from looking at me, I'm a Jew. It is, it is but, you know, we, you can, you can suffer and, and, and feel like the victim. And, of course, we all do at some point. Why is this happening to me? It's not fair. I can't believe it. Uh, it's, it's never going to get better. Not to say that Jews aren't neurotic. No, God forbid. But 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 <laughs> let's but okay. So Woody Allen, who was a known neurotic, to bring him up again. So what did he do with his neuroticism? He made art. He also you married know, his daughter, so it's you know. It's yeah. A, well, it's no. His, or miss. his 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 step. His, yeah. What his girlfriend's. Adopted, adopted daughter yeah yeah no anyway. no i'm i'm fine with it I, I, I don't hold, don't yeah, hold any grudges i'm not there. i'm not saying it's per, whatever i'm not here to judge woody allen but just you know let's say let's look at him as a as a you know an archetype of a neurotic jew as a neurotic jew he said okay well what am i going to do with this neuroticism and he made art right you know it's to jews have suffered um we we do suffer from anti-semitism and whether it's direct to you know jews should die or whatever written on a wall or something or you know somebody who says something to you directly i mean we're kind of used to this we we have the the calluses to show it um but we we rise i wouldn't say we rise above it but we rise with it we just say, okay, this is us. We are we are dealing with anti-Semitism, and here are the things we will do um, to um, to to get through it. And uh, to and and in fact, you know, many say that in a way, Jews are never more connected than when we are um, when there is anti-Semitism around us. Um, we feel each other we feel ourselves ding, 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 you know, ding, ding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh i hit i hit on something okay hit something, yes. points. <laughs> i'm collecting my points i'm writing them down i'm i don't yes. know how many i'm supposed to collect you have sixteen thousand dollars and you get a lot of ooh, points you can double that <laughs> you know yeah you know we oh, yeah we all, all the things that we love to hear everything you're saying is really music to our ears um the 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 problem is uh you just kind of said it as part of a you know just like a little story that you shared um but the question that we have that we're we're you know circling around all the time could it be that this is at the heart of our relationship to anti-semitism could it be that that you know just as this anti-semitism is is making us connect better and unite mm -hmm. more and suddenly see each other and care for each other uh, when when that outside pressure is mounting can it be that the reverse is also true that by connecting we can actually offset this outside pressure maybe even mm -hmm. change it completely um, and and in fact it's kind of a rhetorical question because in our in our podcast that's what we did we not none of this series of talks the mystery book podcast that we did before we kind of went through history and we saw every time Jews Jews were, uh, you know, kind of broke the unity, the, the shit hit the fan. Yeah. You know, uh, Jerusalem fell and, and, you know, pogroms and expulsions and, uh, and it's, it's all following about of this unity of Jews kind of marrying out, quote unquote, marrying out, leaving, I don't want to say assimilating because that conjures different ideas, but literally leaving the mm -hmm. ideal of unity yes because so, we feel safe yeah so, yeah, so, so it, but in my previous life when i moved to new york even actually before i moved to new york um 
but I'll talk about when I was in New York, my first, uh, wait a, whatever, quick stint somewhere else, but my longer job where I worked for, I think from 94 through, I think the end of 1999, I worked for an organization uh, called then National Jewish Outreach Program, NJOP, run by and founded by Rabbi Ephraim Buchwald, who had started um, a beginner's service uh, at Lincoln Square Synagogue, a modern Orthodox synagogue here in Manhattan, and then a Hebrew reading crash course. And, and he brought the four main programs and he decided in 87, launched the day of this big stock market crash um, in October 1987 um, to bring Jews throughout the country and Canada, North America, um, to to learn how to read Hebrew, to learn how to pray, um, a crash course in basic Judaism, and a program called, then called, Turn Friday Night into Shabbos. What I loved about the organization was how um, they looked at, they had 1-800 numbers, and again, this is the late 80s, early 90s, um, and before the internet, et cetera. And they, they looked at marketing Judaism the way you market any other, program. I um, was asked then as the marketing director to help the organization reach however many it was, 200,000 Jews around the country by the year 2000. And I did the math and I said, well, you know, because we, the founders, Orthodox, and we only did this turn Friday night into Shabbos program in Orthodox synagogues, we were limited by the number of people, et cetera. And I said, you know, first of all, we have to change it from Shabbos to Shabbat because the Sephardim and Mizrahim don't call it Shabbos generally. And um, really, we have to be able to find a way to bring in the non-Orthodox synagogues to participate, which we were able to do. Um, everybody agreed to have a Okay, so it wasn't no kosher plates, but it was kosher chicken. Okay, it wasn't two challahs, it was more traditional, it was one hal. We came together. We called it Shabbat Across America. And the goal was to reach 400 synagogues instead of 40 um, in April 1997. We had 397 synagogues participate, most of them not Orthodox. So Jews, no matter their how secular, how religious came together in their synagogue um, to celebrate Shabbat, and we called it um, what unifies us all. You know, as we know the old phrase, more that the Jews have kept the Shabbat, the Shabbat has kept the Jews. And so here were these Jews, you know, 1997, it went, it still goes on every year in, in, in the spring, somewhere between Purim and Passover, where Jews of all, um, you know, from the far left to the, well, not so the far right, um, but Orthodox, not the far or the right Orthodox, get together to celebrate Shabbat together. And with this feeling of unity. And for so many, it meant, for them, it, you know, we'd rabbis who would say, for them, it was as significant a time to go to shul as Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur, because they wanted to feel connected. And it is those things, our traditions, that connect us. That you could go anywhere into anybody's home for Shabbat dinner, even if it's just, you know, takeout and grape juice, whatever it is, we understand it's Shabbat. Um, and so unity, I agree with you, um, is the thing that is our greatest um, weapon against anti-Semitism, um, and again, the issue is that when we are not united, um, because we don't feel that pressure to connect, because we don't feel like our Judaism is threatened, um, that's, that's when we are weakest, and that's when the anti-Semites attack. I don't think anyone else is doing what we're doing, and... Uh, 
Yeah, and that's exactly it. No, nobody can comprehend what we're talking about. How could there? How could? Who would even say that anti-Semites are have anything valuable to say without saying we're anti-Semitic or we're self-hating Jews? But there's something that everybody's missing in this whole picture. And the reason why the solution is so close is because we're not waiting for anyone else to change. We're not waiting for the laws to be enacted. We're not waiting for a new politician to get elected. The answer is way closer than everybody thinks. Like us, uh, hit the, the bell thing on the YouTube so you can get a notification when, when a new episode is up. Well, this is the Jew function. And uh, let's get back to our guests. And again, the issue is that when we are not united, um, because we don't feel that pressure to connect, because we don't feel like our Judaism is threatened, um, that's that's when we are weakest, and that's when the anti-Semites attack. You have in places like, uh, well, anywhere, any very, very left, super, super progressive place, you'll find Jews there, like probably the most leftist progressive person in the whole place is a Jew. Also, when it comes to the right, <clears throat> you have, you know, the most hawkish uh, fundamentalist person is also a Jew. <clears throat> so when you were talking about, you know, there's always this feeling among Jews is like being home and connected. If you put those people, if you if you're just going to list, I think you called it intersectionality before something like that. If you're going to list everyone's, you know, resume there, well, you're a lefty, you're a righty, you're like this, not going to work. But something like a Shabbat table where we're, we don't have to discuss politics or we don't have to discuss um the, you know all of the things that are that were different because by the way it was always 12 tribes you know there's there's in israel there's there's uh, african jews and european jews and, and uh, american jews so we're all very very different i want to uh shift a little bit towards um since you're here on behalf of all women i want to <laughs> shift a, a little bit towards the women's side because it seems to me that even though well, it seems to me that um, men haven't done a great job up until this point in making a peaceful world. Uh, mostly men have been leaders. The question is, you know, it's really is this. I mean, you, um, it's worth mentioning, you know, you wrote a book about certain, certain you know, certain kind, uh, types of women. And I did not read the book, so I'm not pretending Yet. to you know, know, yeah, know what's in it. Um, maybe I'll get a copy uh, if Amazon delivers to uh, you know, Israel. But um, I, what I did notice over the years, and, and it's not just me, if you ask a behavioral psychologist, if you ask people, you can see kind of like how the masculine behavior is, you know, these little little sperm cells running around doing their thing. They can band together if they have to. They can form little groups, little coalitions as needed, and then like also break them. It's kind of very, um, it's, it, it, it's very, very dynamic. And there's, there's not a lot of um, um, the, the, the motivation is not, is not, is not, uh, you know, it's not necessarily altruistic, let's call it this way. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is about expanding and, and going places and, you know, pioneering, you know, all that stuff that men you know, or that energy is doing very well. Uh, whereas that that feminine energy, the one that can actually take something and grow it, we haven't had that in the world um, at, almost at all. Uh, you know, it's always been in the background. It's always mm -hmm. been behind the scenes. And so when I look at nature, I see that, you know, you need these two things to work together, these two energies mm -hmm. to work together. And I guess the question to you is really, how do you think we can we can harness that? Uh, how can we um, awaken that natural, that intuitive sense for the well-being? It takes of... in all the children, regardless if they're a right winger or a left winger. Mm -hmm. They're both at the table. They're both loved. Everybody is here. Everybody's in the hug. How, yeah. how do we? How do we? How, how can we do it? I feel like this is what's what's needed because you know it. You talk. We'll have to talk to every single Jewish man to get them to find. But with women. There's maybe a, a more collective sense 
because it's you know let's let's face it i mean let's say some some non pc stuff i mean it there's never been like the men movement but there's always it's there's a women movement not the men movement right the women naturally feel this as a as a group even though it's hard for them maybe to connect individually collectively as a whole there's this immense power you know anything that men do they do it because of women let's face it yes I mean, oh right? no question i was right? going to say women aren't in the background uh, no women, i mean you know, there's, vi there's, vi visually, you know, visually. Men, 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 no, well, yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. What I'm saying is women are, are not in the background in that we are always the reason why men go to war, um, why men fight. And, you know, yeah, there's like, nothing. I'd rather deal with that war than deal with my wife at home. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, okay. That was a joke, but, well, you, but or, you're right. No, no, but you're right. Or, or they're protecting their family or protecting yeah. their women or, you know, and I mean, I say that, the with this misnomer in feminism is and you alluded to it earlier um is that for some reason in order to be equal women felt that they had to be men and no there is great power in femininity in fact i'd say that femininity is the one thing that can bring a man to his knees femininity is the one thing that is the uh not feminism, by the way, the, femininity. No, femininity is the yeah. thing that, that is a man's kryptonite, right? And so, um, absolutely. And of course, you know, there are those, you've heard of the, the big challa bakes and it's women and their daughters and nieces making challas and, and all of those things are, and there's the sisterhoods and the, it, the truth is, I am a big advocate for men's groups i think men um need in fact men's well-being is is better when they are social when they have friends when they connect with others no, no question and so if anything um i i would look i would advocate for jewish men to find ways um to connect outside of the kiddish club for the generally more orthodox men in shul. I would find Jewish men to, and of course they do in the cheder and in yeshiva where they're, you know, it's usually what, what, you know, two, two guys who are fighting over, you know, one one Talmudic rabbi versus the other, what he said, et cetera. Um, but I think that it, it would benefit all if Jewish men um, found ways to connect outside of you know traditional ways just more in social ways and um i i think that that helps strengthen what what Judaism. unites us then if we're not in sitting in yeshiva uh mm. studying the talmud mm. and uh you know it's not, it's, it's not hearing a, and yeah, it's it's not a problem for me to hang out with someone who has the exact same views as me and talk about what I totally agree with. But what we talked about 10 minutes ago or 15 minutes ago was that uh, the disunity among the Jews is what inevitably leads to the big problems that we see today. Mm -hmm. So how do we bring Jews together so you're saying men we're saying women but let's say all or we'll start with a small group what brings what unites us well you know I I, I think that the, the reason why I'm focusing on the men is because women do it naturally true women women connect with you know that they women always find a way they'll find a common interest whether it's motherhood whether it's Oh, well, of course, what I do is focusing on ants. Um, women are, are we, we create our own tribes within the larger tribes. Uh, and men are less likely to do that, um, partly because in, in the general world, in America or in the West, when men get together, it's somehow seen as a threat which I find remarkably silly. Right. Um, so I think, you know, you would, you could tell me what is it about okay. Jewish men? So I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I, th I know, I know, I got it. I got it. I know. Uh, so first of all, yes, uh, w w 
absolutely men need to um, connect, make, make that effort. Um, they need to reclaim their just masculinity, you know, to, to, to be men. That's it. Yes. Um, there's no such thing as, you know, toxic masculinity, this toxic behavior, but masculinity is it's, it's I- I- idiocy. Uh, they did a study on, uh, on, on, on criminals, by the way, side mm-hmm. note, you know, just to pat ourselves on the shoulder for a second. They did a study um, on, on criminals and what is the leading factor for a child to become a criminal? And it's the absence of a father figure in the house. Right? So we can, we can cancel fatherhood and masculinity. It's ridiculous. But let's put it aside because there's really, it's not worth our time. What I do think is that men, um, like it or not, consciously or subconsciously, as you said, they listen to women. They take note from the women. Uh, mm-hmm. They may play, you know, a big game, uh, you know, outside, but but they listen to the women. And when I'm listening to women, and now I'm not even talking about Jewish women for a second. When I'm listening to the voice of women out, out, outside, mm-hmm. out there in the world, in the media, I don't hear that sort of demand towards men. I don't hear women singing about, hey, guys, get together and, you know, lead the way. I say, you know, give me diamonds and bling and shit, right? I'm generalizing, obviously. Yeah. Well, they don't even have to lead the way. They just have to, in fact, just find each other and just connect with each other. That's 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 already leading the 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 way. I mean, and I'm I'm kind of going back to like prehistoric cultures, right? So the Mm -hmm. so the the women kind of keeping the fire, keeping the and the men go out, get the mammoth, bring it back. So kind of like right right now, I'm saying the mammoth is this this unity. Let's hunt this Mm -hmm. this unity and you know unite, bring it home. But someone has to demand it. Someone has to put some demands. Has to make some. Uh, you know, how do we? How do we? You know, how do you? I mean, you mm-hmm. and all women can can help apply that pressure because we well, need I, it. I talk about it all the time. I mean, I've written about it. I wrote a piece for the Post recently, inspired by um, a book that came out in October by Richard Reeves of Brookings Institute called "Of Boys and Men," which discusses some of the stuff you talked about, like how. Um, you know, b- boys who are not raised with a father or, or, or father figure are more likely to be lost, to get in trouble, end up incarcerated. It, but it goes way beyond that. Right. Um, but it's also culturally how, you know, women, and you talked about toxic mas- masculinity. I wrote a piece, uh, the piece actually I wrote was about how um, in the New York Times, a woman, um, a tech reporter wrote about how uh, Mark Zuckerberg, who we know, the founder, CEO of oh, I read your Facebook, article about this, yeah. Uh, was on uh, Joe Rogan. Um, yeah. And I'm a huge fan of Rogan. I mean, I, I just, Spotify gives the, uh, you know, how many hours, minutes, whatever you spend. And I, I'd listen to other podcasts on, on Spotify. Generally, Apple is my go-to. So it's not like my whole thing. Um, but, you know, it was like 11,000 minutes. It's like, basically, I, I listened to Rogan for like seven days of my life so far this year. And that's only 11 months of the year. So, you know, I'm a fan. And um, and Zuckerberg was on it. And they were talking about jujitsu. And because Rogan's a black belt and Zuck is just getting into it. Anyway, it was, it was framed by this reporter as, quote, unquote, hyper masculinity. As if being you can't you know being a manly man, assuming jujitsu, assuming Mark Zuckerberg, no, he's not really like an A type, you know. Oh, look at that, a alpha male. I mean, I mean, very successful man, but you know, he, he's you know a nerd, right? Yeah. Who thankfully totally. got very successful with Facebook, et cetera, But he's not an alpha male anyway. Hyper masculinity, toxic masculinity, is a way for those using those terms to put men down well, and no, what it does sure. it puts puts boys down so um and it's become you know something in the new york times something that is sort of accepted and so don't look to me as a woman um because i i would like to empower men don't need to be empowered just like women don't and i hate that phrase in general i would like to make space which is also a very left term but make space for oh, men no. Uh, to connect uh, let me tell you as, as a man as a, as, a, as a man so far as i've checked i we we, we love that you know when, mm-hmm. when when women give us a little nudge it's it's not about empowering it's again it's a, it's a sort of i think it goes it's, it's a primal thing it's like yeah. oh you oh you you ran and you, you and you 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 got a scratch here and you 
you hunted it's you did really well it's like you know it's a it's sure. a sensation even you know even in the crudes my son just watched the crudes again for like you know 800 times that's what the crudes the crudes that you know nick cage playing the neanderthal oh come on it's a yeah. it's a jewish story no <laughs> it's a great movie. It's a, no it's a, it's a great animated film with nick cage in the lead role as a neanderthal perfect fit um and but anyway, he's like, you know, his whole being is about like, you know, he just wants to kind of protect the family. He's all brawn, no, no, no brain kind of character, but, but he's full of heart. He just wants to protect. So to get that, that, that little, you know, mm. that, that's what we wanted. This is very, yeah. very potent for, for, a, for a man to feel. Maybe a woman doesn't need that from a, but I, I can tell you that men need that. They need that acknowledgement. Like we can't work in a vacuum in, in that sense. Of course. You know, it, it, but just I heard, a comedian, yeah. I heard a comedian say like a woman gives birth to a baby and a guy changes the doorknob and he's like, honey, look what I did. You know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> well, no, too, I, and I, and I agree. And I think that, <clears throat> that, um, that the idea of, you know, women think, well, men are fine. Men are doing fine. Men had their turn. Men love no, no, men, in fact, are suffering. Men are more likely to commit suicide. Men are more likely to end up in jail. Men are more likely mm -hmm. to die younger. Um, and, I, you know, I think two out of five women are in marriages out earn their, their, um, their husband. Um, men are doing great um, right now. And part of it is because they are not given societal permission, for lack of a better term, to be yeah. manly men. Yeah to be the men, to be the boys and men that they um, can be because manliness is seen as a threat. You know, we in, in, in Jew Jewish life, um, I, we are um, somewhat traditionally patriarchal. Um, the generally, you know, the, the man makes kiddush on Friday night the men are generally the, the, the center of the attention in synagogue. Um, in Orthodox tradition, of course, the women generally are not on the bima um, with the men, etc. There's no question about it. Um, and women are, you know, in more secular, more liberal, uh, traditional, um, you know, holidays and, and rituals, etc. are, are um, finding their way and their roles um, in that. So the the issue is that, you know, beyond um, the relationship between the, the, the patriarch and the matriarch in a family, um, how is it that Jewish men, I'll ask you, how is it that Jewish men connect? Again, I mentioned, you know, for instance, Women will talk about, you know, baking challahs together. You can't change the world, right? You can't change a country. You can't change a city. You can't change a neighborhood. It's hard to get everyone in your building to agree on something. But you can change yourself. And that's what we're after. Little changes that will grow to a critical mass. What we're saying also is that we Jews, we, we've had it. There was a moment in time that Jews actually touched that quality that the whole world is waiting for us to give them, and which is what we're discussing in our talks. And you can hear about it in episode 7 of the Mystery Book Podcast, the first 22 episode, episodes of, of this whole series. And uh, we go into some really heartwarming descriptions, right? Like the, the Temple Woodstock. Love, that episode is called. What's that? Temple Love, that right. Episode. Yeah, it it was the it was the the Woodstock um, before Common Era. Yeah, people should listen to that one and get get a a taste of something that they always knew should exist or had or could exist. It did exist. That's what we're looking to build. Check that out in episode number seven, Temple of. Well, this is the Jew function, and uh, let's get back to our guest. How is it that Jewish men, I'll ask you, how is it that Jewish men connect? Again, I mentioned, you know, for instance, women will talk about, you know, baking challahs together or, you know, we, sharing We eat, we eat challahs together. <laughs> yeah. That's what we do. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, no, so what do I'll, you do I'll, aside? Yeah. I'll tell you, actually, you know, it, it's no secret that, uh, you know, Seth and I are students of Kabbalah and, um, mm. and, um, 
Kabbalah is really it 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 deals with connection primarily. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know what the you know the the sort of the celebrity type of Kabbalah deals with. It deals with uh, I don't know water and strings. But the point is, um, the authentic wisdom really deals with connection, the connection of every mm-hmm. element in unity. Know, yeah, the unity. Mm. Jew, yeah, we, we can say that on the show. Jew, how we got, yeah, how we got to, to to this topic actually in the first place. Mm. Leo right. and I know each other from working from on Kabbalah. unity and, and yeah. Then, ah. yeah, from Kabbalah, and then it turns out that, that Jews have this role in unity, and then we were looking at why isn't there unity, and we mm. got into this whole anti-Semitism thing, and that brought us to this this podcast and right. and the role of the jewish people and is there a specific role to the jewish people and wait just to answer hold just to answer her question so so men uh, spend a lot of time doing exactly that trying to trying to connect small groups and and they work just just on just on on that uh, and there's a whole science to it there's a whole method to it it's not simply socializing playing cards together it's actually trying to how can i you know, see my friends is great. How can I um, kind of lower myself? They do the same. How do we sort of try to find a, a space that's outside of us? Because the connection happens somewhere between us. It's not in me. It's not mm-hmm. in you. It's somewhere. It's a space that we find between us, that we create between us. And mm-hmm. and again, maybe for women, it's much more intuitive. For men, it's much more challenging to kind of yeah. find that space. And th- this is really that work. I don't think the, the world at large is ready for that kind of work, but certainly the understanding that it's it comes from the laws of nature that's really mm-hmm. our whole premise this is yeah. not some you know man-made idea of like let's do this and let's do that and put the you know the thing in the, no those are all expressions uh they have an, an an inner meaning the whole jewish religion all of mm-hmm. that those are all those customs have an inner meaning which is was forgotten basically by most mm-hmm. people we we all, all that's left is the outer husk and that's what we kind of cling to. And it was fine to cling to it when we were in di- diaspora. But now... It held uh, us for 2,000 years. Exactly. It was like mm-hmm. a survival kit. But now you have to kind of go beyond it and, and, and say, why is it called Beit Knesset? Like the place where you mm-hmm. c- connect. You need where you... 10 men. You need 10 men, right? It's, you have exactly. To have and, and, it's a, and by the way, it's a quality. It's not a quantity. It's a quality. And it's very important. Mm-hmm. But yes, you need a group, right? You need a group because it only happens between people there's something that's happening right. there and so mm-hmm. and so we're, we're trying to kind of get people to realize that we're this is not some obscure idea this is not no this is the the last idea that we need to try because as you said in the very beginning nothing else seems to work that's kind of our whole mm-hmm. premise it's not yeah. whatever it is we're doing it's not working it's not making less of an you know less people less anti-semitic uh, but there's no there's no less anti-semitism there's only been a meteoric rise in the last decade it's not gonna naturally eat her out a huge part of, of what we're discovering <clears throat> just from looking at the development of nature uh, and, and through this whole process is we leave uh for people who want to call it god call it god for people who want to call it nature call it nature development we usually we we put it in a certain place in our life but we leave that out of this equation we think we need to fix anti-semitism or we need to fix the environment or we need to fix poverty and the the we didn't uh do most of the great stuff in life is all done by god nature whatever if the source the source yeah the source so but if we come together Mm -hmm. that's how the source flows through the whole system Mm -hmm. so we don't have to actually figure out every solution all of a sudden the light is shining on your head you see we don't have to (laughs) that's nice we don't we don't have to figure out every answer we don't need Mm -hmm. to figure out how everything's going to work if we come together correctly in a good way we'll get the answers we'll understand how to act or think opportunities will open up, or the mm-hmm. the sun will shine on my head, or mm-hmm. whatever w- will happen. We don't. We have to include that kind of third force. There's us connecting about some kind of bigger concept, and then let let it happen. Because it, to our uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but 
whatever it's been, there's no mm -hmm. other explanation for how a little tiny group of a few million have made it through the Egyptian Empire, through the Roman mm -hmm. Empire, through the Greek Empire, through the Persian Empire. Through the Not Spanish only made it, but the actually Egyptian... stayed the same amount, more or less, mm -hmm. while Chinese right exploded. And other, because hubs and nodes, I don't know if you watched that on our Yes, on our I did. Of course I so, did. I do my homework. Oh, that's... <laughs> We should have you more often. Usually, people are like, "Whoa, what these?" But no, but you she's going to be covered in light in a minute, and we're not. <laughs> yeah, the, no, but that's the thing. The, 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 the science kind no, of supports good. it. Yeah, it's uh, okay. You know, as as hubs, you don't need that many of us to to do to do the thing, and it's apparent in every in every other network, the electrical grid, mm -hmm. the internet, everything. It's all answering to the same laws. So we're just talking about laws of nature. Just saying, just be a bit mm -hmm. more you know, in harmony with nature, and that's the meaning of harmony, mm -hmm. not like hug a tree, hug another person, yes. you know, <laughs> connect a bit more. That's mm -hmm. what nature wants to do. That's what nature does anyway, it brings pieces together and makes them connect above their resistance, the yes. natural resistance, right? Let's do that consciously, willingly, and we'll start to see amazing things happening. That's really our whole spiel, you know? I, so the, so the, uh, the great rub of technology uh um steve jobs he has this wonderful commencement speech where he says and i'm gonna you know simplify it of don't worry what you do uh you go from job to job career to career maybe you do this and that he said look i I was, I liked graphic design. I still studied calligraphy um, or vice versa. I studied calligraphy, got interested in graphic design, whatever it was, you know, he says, in the end, all the dots connect. What we don't know when we're on the path and we come to a dot in our life, whether it's a job, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a traumatic incident, um, all of those dots connect and they may connect for us um, when we look back as a way to uh, tell the story of our life or tell the story of our journey or to understand why we are where we are as individuals of course we can say that for our family we could say that for for jews and um how you know, we, we were saying earlier, yes, we suffer, you know, the, the joke is, you know, that Jews suffer, okay, and then we eat, right, and then we have this, a reason to celebrate having survived. Um, when I say that you could meet a Jew anywhere around the world and you feel like you're home, because those dots, um, not literal, obviously, but those dots, that feeling, um, that visceral feeling that you're referring to is what connects us um when i watched the video about the hubs and the knobs and the graphs and that i it was funny i was saying going back to our feminine masculine i was saying you know it actually looks it's it's a very masculine way of looking at it whereas women will see that as a as a feeling as a and i know you do too but it's much more of a we, we don't see the linear connections we see this sort of um, you know, there's a re reason why women women are not obligated to pray three times a day, um, because at a time, well, we don't really know it happens. But yeah, but the baby has to be fed. The, this the food has to be cooked. The, this right? course, we are women we are already worry about time. the world. They already worry yeah. about the world. They don't need to be told to we worry about it. We don't need guidelines, you know, or guideposts to keep us in line, right? So for women, we don't need the lines. We see it, we feel it. And I love your idea of, of, of um, cultivating that in men, that feminine side. We know we all have masculine feminine sides to us, whatever our sex. Um, that for men to cultivate that more visceral feeling of those dots connecting in their own lives, in their relationships, in the Jewish community overall, is extraordinarily powerful. But I will go back to, so guys, how do you connect? How do Jewish men connect? How should 
Jewish men connect? What is what are the activities um, or the habits or the the thoughts, what have you, that 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 you connect? You guys obviously connected in a spiritual capacity, you know, studying Kabbalah together, um, even though you're not in the same uh, on the on, in the same part of planet Earth right now. You are still obviously very connected. You're partners in this project, but otherwise, generally. How should, could Jewish men connect? It's actually not that complicated. No, okay. Men are, men are pretty simple. We, yes. Uh, only have like two, three knobs. Yeah. The whole system. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, we should probably do a, 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 you know, a separate thing on that because, because we haven't gotten into it for so far. We were just, we've been busy just trying to get people to talk about these ideas you know just just sure. that you know just talk about the need to bring connection uh and, and I'll, I'll you know i'll bring it to in the end to a question that i have for you but as, as far as what needs to happen pe people men at least they need to at least uh decide that there is a goal that is more important than any other goal that we may have in life mm -hmm. it's just a higher goal and i'm Which not even is? saying yeah, let's say let's say Jewish men. Let's say this, this is the let's first. Say what what is the goal? Oh, what is the goal? Yes, we, that we need to be united. Uh, that doesn't matter the differences, difference in ideas, opinions, beliefs, styles. You could be left. You could be right. You could be an artist. You could be a doctor. You could be a could be orthodox, worker, but conservative, all, reformed, Syrian, Mexican. I don't care. We all yeah. believe. We all feel that there is some goal that's bigger than all of us. We don't even mm -hmm. have to fully define where it is but that it's we're it's just about, calling it unity for now it's yeah, it's, it, it's it's yeah. something that includes all of us it's something that's good for everyone yeah. and 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 you and when you gather there's also stuff that's happening outside but when you gather mm -hmm. you 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 want to work towards that above anything that will awaken in you against it and stuff will awaken they say about the the 10 men who wrote the book of zohar that before mm -hmm. they sat down to study they were like as enemies as men of war wanting to kill mm -hmm. each other and that's good. That's what you need. You need that quality because on top of it, you can unite. That's really the whole story of the Jews. You, you know, there's resistance, you unite above it. Friction, you unite above it. That's what makes a strong marriage. That's what makes a strong bond, strong connection. Just being friends when it's good, that's vanilla. That doesn't lead anywhere, mm -hmm. right? So this is what men practice. And by the way, nature does an excellent job providing all the friction you need. You just need to make efforts to unite above it above it above mm -hmm. it each time going higher and higher deeper and deeper into that place this is really what it's about of course there's other things and that takes, takes work and it takes courage correct and um, we are very very comfortable and we enjoy our comforts and so that's why that, we yes so that's ahead. so that's my my last question because i know because seth actually has to go he 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 kind of ran from work to do it i'm i yeah. i can stay for another hour but um the question is this i'm very scared um mm -hmm. For, for for the Jewish people that I know, that I've spoken with, and we've had other conversations, you know, Seth and I also have had, uh, there's a series called Honest Conversations uh, on our YouTube channel as well, where it's uh, me with Dr. Lightman uh, and, uh, and other guests, Jews, non-Jews and all that. And that level of comfort and confidence is very mm -hmm. disturbing to me. And I'm, I'm, I'm scared that, that the Jews will not choose to mm. leave everything behind and focus on that unity, being the agent mm. of unity in their environment until it's too late, until they're mm. already, you know, God forbid, you know, locked up on trains, whatever. That's my fear. And, and I, I don't know how to, mm. how to make someone do it. I mean, this is a spiritual leap. This is akin to, you know, get up, leave your home, go to sit with a yogi in the cave and, you know, for 13 years and come back. It's, it's akin <laughs> to, uh, to Moshe say, okay, he said, let, he agreed, let my people go. Exactly. Right? Right. Quickly, exactly. pack up, we're and, going. Right? It's our remember, story. But remember, not all Jews left. Some were comfortable uh, in because, you know, it's a regular gig. I know where I'm going in the morning. I'm going to build a pyramid. I have to, you know, make the bricks. I know what yeah. I'm doing. You want me to take a chance. You want me to believe. Yes. You want me yes. to see, right? Yes. And so we go on this journey. 
together as Jews. We go on the journey. Yes, there are times the resistance. The minute we get, you know, a few feet away, we want to run back. What did we do? I can't believe it. We're silly. We're silly. And then we keep going. Oh, but no, there's no food. Okay, but and we keep going and we keep going. Um, and that generation of Jews had to die in the desert yes. because that feeling of maybe regret had to leave. And so, um, and so, yes, we are being led. You are, you guys are are doing something that's remarkable. You are uh, the the co the, the Moses and our own. I won't say who's who of leading us out of um, our comfort as Jews, um, and or even wondering, you know, after I mean, they were slaves for like four for some odd hundred years, you know, where is our identity? Um, you want to lead us to a place that may, be, may start off, may even be throughout the journey, uncomfortable. Um, but if the goal is to unite Jews, then- um, and, hu and humanity, and humanity. And humanity, that, that, is, that is beautiful um, and it's wonderful. And I do love that, that connection, um, that is on a whole other dimension, whole other di um, paradigm, um, the way that we connect with each other. And um, again, seeing I could walk down the street and know it's two Israelis walking toward me, one Ashkenazi and one Sephardi, right? But I just know that they are, that they are Jews. And so that, that sense um, that is, you know, our, our genetic, um, you know, part of our DNA, um, that is, you know, our, in our spirit, um, in our soul is something that is very powerful. And so, yes, the, the, what's interesting is that the, you say that the goal is to unify, is to find that unity, but it is first, perhaps, we have to see it first as the source. First, we have to understand it as who we are and the essence of who we are. And from that, um, then well, we can find our way back. I, I, I'll tell you a secret. It says the Bible, you know, do and then hear, right? So we, we from mm -hmm. the action, we get to know it. Yes. But, you know, um, that's, sadly, that's all the time we have. Um, but it sounded like a great invitation because uh, obviously Melanie was talking about all, all the Jews listening, not about us. So if you heard it, uh, then you're invited to join this. Let's really... All we do talk about this yeah, unity and this goal. I think it's more important than anything. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, having Melanie on. Um, really, what a what a gift, what a what a charm today. Yeah, yeah, so oh, brought some you. so much light to this uh, to this show. Thank uh, you. Literally, too, with the sun in my yeah. eyes. Uh, <laughs> it was wonderful for me too. I I love this stuff, and I think what you're doing is is wonderful. But also because you are you're doing it as you're you're not coming with okay well these are the things you need to do but rather you know you're you are literally unifying with other jews connecting with other jews and perhaps some gentiles um to find out what it is um that will unify us and i think that that's beautiful the medium is the message so um yashar yashar koach to both of you uh, go from strength to strength and i'm rooting for you and rooting for all of us all of us thank you Melanie. thank you so yeah, much we're gonna do it we're, we're gonna, gonna do it together. Uh, uh, like follow share comment hit the bell this is the true function everywhere on youtube instagram facebook uh, maybe on tiktok soon i don't know we'll see but um on twitter we're, we're everywhere uh wherever you know wherever you are that's where we are the jew function and we'll see you all next week thank you everyone and until next time thank you.